Why haven't black boxes in airplanes been engineered to have real-time streaming to a remote location yet? There are now satellites which receive ads B data over oceanic and other sparsely populated areas. Each aircraft transmits location and various flight parameters every few seconds. In the United States, the FAA made ads B transmitters a requirement for all aircraft in most U.S. airspace on January 1, 2020. FlightAware has ads B satellite data, but currently charges a fee for access to it. It costs money. Airline profit margins are typically lower than many other industries, where 9% to 12% can be considered amazing years. When the industry is dividing cabins in creative ways to eke out more profit, they're not interested in voluntarily, not being mandated by the FAA, spending money or adding weight. Especially for something that is a statistically rare occurrence. Qantas have extensive real-time monitoring data streams and have a huge amount of machine learning and other things running over the top of the data consistently looking for defects etc. They also download all the data after each flight and ingest it into a data lake which is enormous. Source, worked for Qantas. A lot do. On our aircraft, fairly large advanced helicopters, all system and navigation information is transmitted every two minutes. The information is protected, and not even management can access it but certain individuals can access it under specific circumstances. Because of the cost. I'm currently working on a few digital products for one of the bigger aviation companies and I couldn't believe how much would they rather keep the money than improving the experience for the crew and passengers. The stories they've told me in user interviews were downright scary and makes you wonder how there aren't more accidents. Something like this probably will happen eventually once these internet beaming constellations like Starlink are online and affordable. Right now, the bandwidth and equipment is much too expensive for the very few times it might have been useful. 100,000 flights happen every day globally and only a handful of accidents over the last few decades where this capability would have made a difference. I've worked extremely close with the black box manufacturers, FAA, and airframe manufacturers. And the best and most true answer is money, it is extremely expensive to develop and maintain such a system. So the easiest solution, keep status quo until the laws force you to. The reason is economics, not science. Cost versus benefit. There would be a high cost to implement such a system-wide change. For very little benefit. The current system works very well for its purpose save a few outlying but highly publicized cases. Since the demand is so low, the price the market will dictate does not exceed the cost. Seems like a no-brainer, but that's a lot of data, per plane, per second of flight. It all has to go somewhere and be stored, for how long? Ads B broadcasts are one thing but a full stream of every black box would require a lot of backhaul infrastructure. Because Rolls-Royce engines have a good tracker and are constantly updating in real-time every measurable variable during operation. This is all live-streamed to Rolls-Royce HQ where there is someone monitoring them all the time. I think the real question isn't that enough to track and monitor commercial airlines. Maybe I'm underthinking this. But there are 87,000 flights every day, in the US alone. According to Google, that's an incredible amount of data to handle. Especially given that in 99.9999% of the time it's meaningless information. It wouldn't t need to be streaming constantly, but it should start a stream when any parameter is outside its normal values, or if the pilot presses his new, emergency stream, button. This solves the problem with, it, s too much data to handle if all planes would constantly send everything. In an episode of Doctor Who, the black box was reconceived as a home box for spacecraft, it flew itself home to make sure the flight data was preserved. Sci-fi? For now. But with our drone technology improving, maybe in 100 years it's an idea that could be considered? Even if it doesn't fly to a location but just ejects and lands safely nearby. It is more stuff that can break, think about your hammer, you don't have a screwdriver in it or have it as a ham radio, simpler systems don't break as easy, the same reason that surveillance video is in low quality. Because manufacturers aim to make money and comply with government regulations and no more. If it isn't a feature that contributes to the bottom line, they won't include it. You can't blame a business for wanting to make money. To an extent, there is. Most airlines participate in Flight Operations Quality Assurance or FOQA. If certain flight parameters are exceeded, they are recorded. We're talking things like heading, airspeed, bank angle, descent angle and rate, thrust lever angle and auto flight modes in use. However, things like voice recorders most likely will not be transferred in real time due to privacy concerns existed before 9-11 as periodic transmissions of engine performance data to satellites. Options existed in the 90s to include aircraft sensor data, but few, if any, airlines wanted to pay for it. Some are doing so now. There are some other good plausible answers but I am going to say because it's not mandatory. 
It's the reason that was given when that one flight disappeared. Real-time location information not transmitted because it was not mandatory. IDK about planes but I'm pretty sure that commercial boats are obligated to subscribe to a beacon service for a meager annual fee, something like 20 bucks. I really wish this service gets upgraded to a data cloud for black boxes for both aircrafts and ships and I'm pretty sure all will be more than obliged to pay whatever annual fees this would take. FM radio stations have huge electronic amplification configurations to help propagate the OTA signal so that it can reach your car or apartment, and even those only work within a small geographic area. The FM radio frequency band also happens to be one of the more robust bands in the frequency spectrum. Redesigning the black box would cost massive amounts of cash due to the levels of certification and regulation required for aviation tech. It will only be redesigned if it stops working. People outside the aviation industry might think that aviation is always using latest tech, but they would be wrong. Surely when Starlink is operational all aircraft will have a real-time connection capable of streaming all the needed telemetry data. I mean we have pilots sitting in a chair on an army base flying drones in real time. Same could be done here while utilizing some AI systems on the plane to handle the fine-tuning. Look up the story about the first global network called Iridium. It would do exactly as you asked, but politics and more politics killed it. The current global network by SpaceX is really the next gen of this type of global technology. The airline industry is very slow to adapt changes. Their mantra is, ain't broke, don't fix. Small changes in one system may cascade into unforeseen consequences, and so the airline industry does not do anything beyond what is absolutely necessary. Where would you transmit to? To make your idea feasible you would need to transmit the data to a receiver. That means you would need enough receivers to provide worldwide coverage. How would that work over the oceans? Satellites? That's a possibility, but would require a large number of satellites. Who would pay for them? 